Everybody loves versus horror movies. Alien vs. Predator, Jason vs. Freddy, Ginger Dead Man vs. Evil Bong, and Dahmer vs. Gacy. Uh, wait, uh, go, go, go back to that last one? Yeah, aren't, aren't, aren't those, like, real guys who, like, actually killed people? This is a real movie? Oh. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful, no one would touch. Then came a Matthew. Sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew doesn't drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode, Dahmer vs. Gacy. Heck. Mountain Dew Spiked is non-alcoholic. Mountain Dew, you can't just call your product something just because it sounds extreme if it already means something else. Anyways, I'm Matt, and welcome back to the never-ending escapades of me getting immediately demonetized because of the movies I review. Today we're looking at Dahmer vs. Gacy. Dahmer vs. Gacy is a 2010 film about notorious serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy. And look, I'm clearly not above making jokes about serial killers, but I do try to limit myself to ones that don't exist. Still, let's give Dahmer vs. Gacy a shot here and look at its IMDb page. And the title Dahmer vs. Gacy is immediately the least disconcerting thing about this. Let's start with what most people probably won't catch right off the bat, the plot. A secret government has been tr uh, wait, a secret government? Did you mean a secret government agency? Um, the government in this movie is the US. Not really a secret there. A secret government agency has been trying to create the ultimate killer using the DNA of infamous serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy. But there's one big problem. They've escaped. Yeah, that that's the plot to Virtuosity. I mean, I like Virtuosity, but it's a terrible movie, and we really shouldn't be ripping it off. Second, John Wayne Gacy is played by Randall Malone, who you might recognize as the lovable Dr. Cantlove from Amazing Bulk. I mean, he is a pretty fitting choice for the role, but... Can anyone recover from being an amazing bulk? And it's an amazing bulk reunion, or technically pre-union, as Jed Rowan, who played Detective Ray, also makes an appearance in this film. Well, it ain't Barney the Purple Dinosaur! And I guess we should talk about the man in a unicorn outfit. Writer, director, and star, Ford Austin, the mind behind Aliens vs. Ale. Let's just take a look at its IMDb description. Luke Skywalker joins forces with a Jedi Knight, a cocky pilot, a Wookiee, and two droids to save the universe from the Empire's world-destroying battle station, while also attempting to rescue Princess Leia from the evil Darth Vader. Yeah, I don't think that's what this movie's about. Also, according to IMDb, Austin is a direct descendant of the first president of Texas, Stephen F. Austin. This is your fault, Stephen! You did this! And man, that's two dumb versus movies where someone's a direct descendant of a Texas revolutionary. Although this time it's a real-life person and not a stupid idea for a character trait. Of course, the movie also features some semi-noteworthy actors, including Art Lefleur of Cobra and Field of Dreams, Ethan Phillips, who had a role in Inside Lynn Davis, Erwin Keyes from House of a Thousand Corpses, and Bonnie Ahrens, who played the demon in The Conjuring 2, just to name a few. And I gotta say, I'm really impressed the movie is in both stereo and surround sound. Except it's not. Because the surround sound one won't play. Yet look at that, there's only one file on this DVD. I'm so shocked. So now that we've determined this is gonna be a train wreck, let's find out if Dahmer vs. Gacy is an interesting train wreck, or a completely unwatchable train wreck. So the movie opens on knockoff Jimmy Fallon getting interviewed about a book he wrote on serial killers. Well, he's dead. 
Then we start in the laboratory where Secret Experiment X-13 is being made. I mean, we could just skip ahead like ten experiments and watch Logan instead. This is Dr. Stravinsky, the man behind the X-13 program, and Dr. Hess, a new recruit brought in for his knowledge of cloning. Stravinsky explains that X-13 is supposed to be the deadliest killing machine, with DNA taken from clones of some of history's deadliest serial killers. Cloning the most despicable characters in recent history is a really horrible idea. It's just plain foolish. More than foolish, it, 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 it's irresponsible. Yeah, I have to agree with this guy. What the fuck are you thinking? And where the fuck did you get all this serial killer DNA? Shock of shocks, it doesn't take long for an emergency to happen. At least, I think that's what's going on. I can't understand a damn thing this guy's saying. I'm going to assume this means Dahmer and Gacy have escaped, because next we see them, they've escaped, and, you know, it's the plot of the movie. Then we meet a hobo, and wow, this hardcore Henry test footage is way lamer than the actual movie. I do kind of love that they bothered to give the Gacy clone his signature clown outfit. And hey, that IT movie's still popular, right? So this is a totally topical review. Unless you're watching this after that stopped being popular. Hey, you know, if the movie was just this, it'd be a 10 out of 10. Looks like today's my lucky day. Don't forget your bag. Ah, that Jeffrey Dahmer. So considerate, making sure people remember their things. Uh, I'm headed over to Oklahoma City. That's where my parents live. Mm, the sweet, sultry sound of her hair brushing up against the microphone. One awkward transition later, and the hitchhiker starts to think Jeff looks a little bit familiar. You look really familiar. Are you like an actor or something? Well, I was in this movie called Dahmer vs. Gacy. Ugh, immediate turnoff! Damn it. Like, yeah, there are people that would recognize Jeffrey Dahmer, but not some random woman on the side of the street. And if she did recognize him, she'd recognize him right off as Jeffrey Dahmer. Maybe there's something I could do to return the favor. And, uh, how would you do that? Well... How about I give you a little head? <laughs> sure. How about if I just take yours? Okay, that knife went nowhere near where her head should be. And also, dude, don't be swinging a knife in the direction of your penis. Come on. And then we find out Dr. Stravinsky's wife and daughter were murdered. Really keeping the laughs high in this comedy. Oof, hard time since Twin Peaks went off the air. Er, I mean... And the mime gets murdered. You know, I'm pretty sure this movie isn't accurate to Dahmer or Gacy's M.O., but, uh... I'm not looking it up, because I really don't need that in my Google search history. But, last I checked, Gacy was mostly just little kids. Then we meet a crazy person. Dude, the movie is called Dahmer vs. Gacy. We don't need a crazy character. Take the gun out of your mouth. Wow, that character was short-lived. Nah, he's fine. This is Ringo, a redneck who hears the voice of God through his radio. The Bible teaches us that it is far better to give than to receive children. With that in mind, I urge you to open your hearts and open your wallets. <laughs> Cause televangelists are con artists looking to scam people out of their money. <laughs> We've known about that since the 1980s. Can we get some relevant social commentary in here? And what is this shit? Who still read porno mags in 2010? Get with the internet. Oh shit, the Confederate flag. Uh, I better take some stance on this or people are gonna get pissed. Um, I am very much on the side of freedom and equality. Ha! Take that other side! Get mad. 
Mmm, that's some very apple juice colored whiskey you got there. Two unknown and possibly unrelated killers, neither of which have been identified or captured on film, have been randomly killing innocent bystanders along the coast today. Oh, this just in. Hilarious text scrolling by at the bottom of the screen found to be incredibly distracting and also the funniest part of this movie. And look at some of these. Artie Lang in talks for Beverly Hills Ninja 2? That existed in 2010, sort of. You know how you get a nun pregnant? You fuck her. You know how you keep from getting her pregnant? You fuck her in the ass. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm more concerned with. How atrocious that joke was, or the fact that that's Steven Adler, former drummer of Guns N' Roses. Hmm, metal musicians and crappy horror movies. Might be something worth looking into. Oh, and while we're making a comedy about real-life serial killers, why not throw in a gag about Adler's real-life drug addiction? This movie is just the epitome of class. And then these two decide this is Gremlins 2 or something and try to jokey joke away all the continuity problems. Oh come on, who jokes about their own flaws in an attempt to distract people from how half-assed and derivative their content is? <sighs> Could you imagine if someone were to make a movie based on Dr. Stravinsky's experiment? <laughs> I wonder what they'd call it. Oh, probably something lame and over the top like... Dahmer versus Gacy. <laughs> uh, he said it. God, that movie would turn out to be such a piece of shit. A regular Plan 9 from outer space. I don't know, I think it'd be more like Amazing Bulk. Well, it's too bad this isn't a movie, then we could just turn it off and it'd all be over. Hey, good idea. And then Jeffrey Dahmer kills Guns N' Roses drummer Steven Adler and fucks his corpse. And we're taking this one to Wikipedia. Yeah, okay, looks like you may have fucked a few corpses, but you know, maybe that's something you leave out of your comedy movie. Wait, what's this? Charges against him. Public intoxication? Um, isn't that a bit excessive, all things considered? Then again, this movie clearly doesn't give a fuck what you think should be in it, as Ringo spends three whole minutes talking about his sexual fantasies with the host of The Weakest Link. My fantasy would be for me to go on that show and uh, I just suck. I, I'm just the, I am the weakest link. And she knows it. She calls me out to the carpet and she's like, Ringo, you are the weakest link. Now, come here and let me sit on your face. Let me repeat that for the folks in the back. In the movie Dahmer vs. Gacy, there's a redneck named Ringo who spends three minutes talking to God through his radio about his sexual fantasies with the host of the game show, The Weakest Link. What is my life? Thank you, Hal. Now I'm standing here with one of the fans of the serial killers. Please tell us your name and why are you such a fan? Hi, I'm Valerie Winters. I think these serial killers are incredible. I haven't seen good old-fashioned carnage like this in years. Natural born killers did it better. And like 16 years earlier. And you know what? They make Charles Manson look like a pussy. Dude, Manson was a cult leader, not a serial killer. Doesn't have the balls to kill on his own. Frickin' Dead Eye Eddie makes him look like a pussy. Does this mean I can appear on screen? No. Can I at least get another episode of my show? We'll see. And, oh, I used to have posters of guys like Ted Bundy hanging on my walls. And I used to play with Charlie Manson action figures and eat lunch out of a Jeffrey Dahmer lunchbox. Okay, I hate to disillusion you, but, uh, serial killers just don't have the glitz and glamour we like to shower them with. I mean, Manson was a racist, Bundy was a rapist, even Dahmer and Gacy were kind of pedophiles. I'm just saying, maybe when we look at their accomplishments, we should also consider their seedier personal lives. Anyway, Stravinsky is replaced by Dr. Wiley Sands Mustache, and the general calls to speak with him. Therefore, we will be speaking in Gamma 9 code to ensure that this information doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Uh, okay, okay. 
Lekka lekka high, lekka lekka hiney ho. Ha 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 ha. This is the funniest shit, dude. Come on, try a little. Anyway, the general proposes they release the experimental killer X13 to kill Dahmer and Gacy. And fine, for the sake of fairness, I'll play this bit I found pretty funny. It was this guy standing there in a clown suit, and he jumped over the register, and he sliced the head off of the cashier. And then he jumped back over, and he sliced the head off of the guy who was standing in the front of the line. It was so fucking cool. And then they gave me my groceries for free. Well, there's nothing tragic about free groceries, especially in this economy. Oh, and Japan has been developing their own clones, and they're coming to kill Dahmer and Gacy. There's one more thing, General. Yeah? They're ninjas. Ninjas? Holy mother of fuck! Gotta say, the setting the camera in the cup holder shot is an incredibly underused cinematic technique. More well known is the we snuck a camera into a grocery store look. But the soundtrack's fucking awesome, so we'll call it even. Oh, and looks like I'm the jackass because they clearly had a throwaway line on the radio about how these new killers don't follow Dahmer and Gacy's M.O.'s. Authorities are quick to note, however, that there are significant differences between the killer stars and those of the two murderers who originally terrorized Milwaukee and Chicago, respectively. Most notably, these new killers, unlike their predecessors, are killing both men and women. Glad no one could miss that. Anyway, God had Ringo out to the middle of nowhere to dig up a katana. So... God is a weeaboo confirmed? I mean, he did create Japan. I guess that means God is the biggest weeaboo of them all. Oh, and here's the payoff to the ninja's plot point. Ringo kills all but one of them. Cause who'd want to see the title characters fight ninjas? So does this make Ford Austin, like, the anti-Godfrey Ho? Then the news lady interviews a kid who wants to be the next great serial killer, and... Oh shit, it's the Michael Myers kid from the Rob Zombie Halloween remake. Lady, get out of there! Dahmer vs. Gacy is at least better than that! Although I think they did steal a scene from that Rob Zombie remake. Can we talk about how these news inserts don't play into anything? They're just little throwaway gags? Like, this is barely a step above those Amber Lynn scenes in Things. So Jeff's got Dr. Stravinsky tied up in Stravinsky's basement, and he just goes on and on and on. Like, even the movie realizes he's going on too long. And man, that sure is one high-quality Halloween store prop. Jeff is about to kill him, but wouldn't you know, John shows up. And they just kinda go at it for a while. I'll admit, Austin and Malone actually do a pretty good job as Dahmer and Gacy, but uh... Can we get to that versus part? Yeah, thanks, I I except you you dropped your knife. You had the upper hand, what, what kind of a dumbass are you? And we're cutting away from the fight to see Stravinsky run off. Come on, I wanna see the fight. Yeah, no, I take it back, I didn't want this. So, X-13 shows up, murders Dr. Stravinsky, and then kills John Wayne Gacy with a corn cob. Hi, fucker. How you doing, fucker? Pretty fucking good, fuckball. It's been a long time, eh? I am gonna fuck you. I will fuck you in your ass, and you'll like it, and I'll like it! Oh, I'm gonna fuck you so fucking hard. You know what? I'm gonna fuck you inside out. Ah. Back to the Rob Zombie Halloween formula, I see. Then two of the ninjas show up, even though only one survived earlier. Dahmer kills one, but screw Gacy, I guess. He's not played by the director. Oh, and don't worry, Dahmer gets killed by a corn cop too. Then Ringo shows up and shoots X-13. How... 
anticlimactic. Whatever, movie's almost over. All we got is Wily explaining to the general that another clone has escaped. Which one? It's Charles Manson, isn't it? Yeah, glad that wasn't obvious. Nice that the clone got the swastika tattoo on his forehead, too. And also kills people in a way Charles Manson isn't known for. Fucking hell. And that was Dahmer vs. Gacy. Yeah. I hate to be too hard on this movie, as it's clearly not taking itself too seriously, but the humor kinda comes across as juvenile. It's like it wants to be in the same vein as like a trauma movie by just being as goofy as possible, but it's so tasteless and unfunny. It's not god-awful humor, but it's pretty light on laughs. The production design's surprisingly good for such a low-budget production, but it's got some pretty obvious cracks. I probably wouldn't recommend Dahmer vs. Gacy to anyone, but it's far from the worst movie I've featured on this show. So, much like its other versus horror predecessors, the versus part is really played up in the title even though ultimately it's really underwhelming and disappointing. So it goes down alongside movies like King Kong vs. Godzilla, Chupacabra vs. The Alamo, and of course the Seinfeld spin-off, Kramer vs. Kramer. I've never actually seen that movie. But I have seen fucking Dahmer vs. Gacy. I'm gonna fuck you so hard that a fucking Donkey Kong machine's gonna fall out of your asshole and it's gonna get the top score. I'm gonna fuck you so hard they're gonna build a housing development right down the side of your left thigh because there's gonna be so much room moving in and out of your asshole that people will want the space and they'll start buying the real estate. These are these people walking around. These are my actual classmates. I go to school with these people. And I'm out here yelling about fucking... Dahmer versus Gacy in a fucking statue. Please accept me, internet.